Hi there! On the bench today, another multimeter I bought as part of a job lot on eBay. It's the UA890C Plus from Uyi Gao. It came with leads and manual in the original box. Let's see if it's any good. It has a thick red rubber sleeve around the meter with a hole to hang the meter on a hook and grooves to put probes in. It has a tilting bail. Kind of works okay, but it has too much bounce for my liking. To use the built-in torch, the meter has to be on. I like the display, large digits, easy to read. Anyway, the torch light isn't great, but I guess better than none if you need one. The backlight is nice. It runs for 30 seconds. The manual seems to say that the period extends if you press any button or move the switch, but that's not true. The meter claims a ridiculously high cat rating. To be true, the meter would have to be protected like flukes or brimens, and honestly, this meter looks very much like the usual Chinese rubbish, but looks maybe deceiving, although the spelling of fuse doesn't instill confidence. Neither do the plugs of the probes, which are extremely short. Luckily the meter does accept normal probes as well. To dive inside, I first want to check the battery compartment. It is hiding under the tilting bale. A single screw needs to be removed to reveal a 9V battery that came with the meter. The screw goes into a metal threaded insert, which is nice, but it's not held captive by the lid, so the screw can get lost fairly easily. The sleeve is very tight and I struggled for quite some time. Removal is made extra difficult by the shape of the body with all these protrusions and ridges that have no purpose. With the sleeve finally off, there are the usual four self-tapper screws, one in each corner. One of them is kind of stuck and prevents the opening. The screw just spins. I have to resort to pliers, but finally it's out and I can pull the enclosure apart. Just one glance is enough to confidently declare the claimed cat rating to be completely bogus. Just one lonely and tiny PTC, no tracking slots or moths, and while the fuses are ceramic, they are tiny. The brain of this 2000 count meter is an unidentifiable blob with very few other components. No trim pots, so cull is done by programming, which usually means no chance of redoing your own, especially if the chip itself is unknown. There is the torch LED and three LEDs for continuity and other warnings. There is a date on the PCB, revision 01, 2019 11 assuming year month day that established an earliest possible manufacturing date of November 2019. The sockets for the current are not split, so there is no input alert warning you if the leads are in the wrong socket. The shunt resistor is the largest I've ever seen in a multimeter, probably to handle the max 20 amp range, but will it really? If you follow the current path from the 20 amp socket to the fuse, a reasonably wide track, from the other end of the fuse on the wide track under the shunt, then through the shunt, but then comes a tiny trace going through the COM terminal. Really? That tiny trace is just another fuse. I wonder which one will blow first. Let's look at these fuses. The 20 amp one first. On the PCB it's labeled 20 amps 250 volts. The fuse itself is marked F20A L250 volts. The other end cap has the logos of a lot of certification labs supposedly indicating their approval. The PCB for the other fuse says 0 0.2 amps 250 volts and the fuse was marked like the other one except that it says F0.2A. Both fuses feel suspiciously light. The 20 amp fuse puts only 0 0.79 grams on the scale. And the other one is practically identical with 0 0.8 grams. For comparison, I took a 10 amp fuse from a reputable vendor and it brings 1.27 grams on the scale. That is nearly 0 0.5 grams more, not far from double the weight. Another comparison, this time with a glass fuse rated 200 milliamps. 
0.64 grams, which is nearly the weight of the two ceramic fuses in the meter. Conclusion, these fuses are fake and do not contain any filling to extinguish arcs. Only one way to make sure. This here is the 200 milliamp fuse from the meter, since I have a glass fuse of the same rating as a replacement. There you go. No filler whatsoever. And since this fuse has the same weight as the 20 amp fuse, the same is true for that one. How careless Chinese manufacturers are with the life of people buying their products. I could end the video here, but I will do a few more tests, but not to the level I normally test meters. Diet mode. An open diet is shown OL and a short as zero. A single silicon diet is fine. And so are two in series. A single red LED lights and a forward voltage is shown. Two red LEDs in series cannot be tested. A yellow LED lights and the forward voltage is shown. A white LED cannot be measured. Ohms now, the meter has no rel function for ohms. 1 ohm, spot on. 10 ohms, ok. 100 ohms, still in spec. The other resistors are all in spec. 10 meg takes some time to settle and 100 meg even longer. The maximum value the meter can measure is 200 meg, which is impressive. There is just one capacitor setting marked 20 millifarad. Turns out that this is actually auto range from 20 nanofarad, but accuracy is only specified to 2 millifarad. The 20 millifarad range is marked for reference only. 1 nanofarad, not too bad actually. 500 picofarad and 200 picofarad, still ok. -ish. 10 nanofarad and 20 nanofarad are ok. Testing 100 nanofarad to 2 microfarad. And while showing ok results, the meter is already noticeably slowing down. 4 seconds for a 2 microfarad capacitor. This is the slowest capacitance multimeter I have tried. And it gets only worse when moving to electrolytics. Just watch me measuring this 1000 microfarad capacitor. 15 seconds, unbelievable. Of course, the meter has the slightly silly transistor test function and an NPN transistor tests just fine. The life function works fine. Besides the beep, we have three red LEDs and just watch that the low bat symbol turns on, giving a hint that this blinking and beeping is a heavy burden on the battery. NCV works ok, no complaints here. Measuring an AC sinusoidal voltage is fine. Switching to a rectangular wave reveals that this meter is actually true RMS as you might expect from a reasonably modern design. How about some AC plus DC? The UA890C plus has no problem getting the AC part right. And the DC part is also reasonably ok. It's a bit off with very low DC offsets of about 60 millivolts, but that might be because I'm still in the 2 volt range. But switching to 200 millivolts does not produce any useful reading. Here is the more common case, a small AC like a ripple voltage on top of DC. It measures the DC part just fine and the AC part is also ok. For DC volts I'm using my calibrator and I have to use the backlight for making the display more visible for the camera. Anyway, 10 millivolts ok, 100 millivolts also ok, 200 millivolts fine. 1 volt spot on. 2 volts in the 20 volt range. 10 volts spot on. 20 volts in the 200 volt range. 100 volts. The meter is actually pretty accurate, no complaints here. DC currents now. 100 microamps in the 20 milliamp range, ok. 1 milliamp. 10 milliamp fine. 20 milliamps in the 200 milliamp range. 100 milliamps, ok, the meter is always just a little low, but still quite accurate. I almost forgot continuity. 
Okay, here it goes. Pretty dreadful, but to be fair, that could be because of the low quality probes. Replacing them with good quality ones. And what a difference that makes. Besides those weird plugs, the probes that came with it are marked 1000 volts and 20 amps in line with the 20 amp range of the meter. CAT 3 is shown on the other side, no mentioning of CAT 4. No markings on the PVC cables. A quick check on burden resistances. The 20 amp range measures 0 0.07 ohm. 200 milliamps has 1.6 ohms and 20 milliamps the same. These are actually not too bad values. Many modern meters targeting electronics have an extra high input resistance at the low voltage ranges. The manual only says 10 meg for all ranges, but you never know, better check. Much to my surprise, the input resistance in the 2 volt range is just 5 meg. That's pretty bad. And even slightly worse in the 200 millivolt range. Only the 20 volts and above ranges have the claimed 10 meg. And yes, it's the same for AC, except there is no 200 millivolt AC range. I measure the battery current the meter draws while going over all the functions and ranges. It's usually about 1.5 milliamps, which isn't too bad. But we already know that beeping and the red LEDs make the low but symbol appear temporarily. So what's the current draw of that? More than 90 milliamps, no wonder. What about the backlight? Close to 14 milliamps, that's just about tolerable. The torch light draws about the same. I put a 10 key resistor on the meter to see if it starts producing wrong measurements when the battery voltage shown on the blue meter is dropping. The low bat comes on very early at about 7.3 to 7.4 volts. That's basically rules out the use of rechargeable batteries, at least those that have a nominal voltage of 7.2 volts. Let's see what happens if you ignore the low bat warning. The meter keeps on going just fine. A clear indication that the low bat threshold has been set way too high. I can drop to less than 3 volts with no sign of problems or wrong values. Ok, now we are seeing some effects, but it's just about 2 volts battery voltage. And below 1.5 or so, it finally gives up. This meter has an auto power off, which the manual says is 15 minutes. By the way, you can disable APO by holding the select key while powering on. Well, at 15 minutes, 11 seconds or so, we get an alert. And roughly one minute later, the meter shuts down. The current draw in this state is about 22 microamps, which is acceptable, but it's still better to turn the meter off manually. I don't think there's any doubt. The UA890C Plus is not a meter I recommend for anyone. False cat markings, fake fuses and not even a manual that can be trusted like on input resistance, this is a prime example of a meter to avoid, despite that many functions are actually working ok. I would go one step further and avoid any meter from UIGAO. If enough people do that, maybe they get the message. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and help growing this channel and consider becoming a Patreon. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.